Hello, I'm Atumba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, are you happy today? Praise <laughs> God. If you are not, I want to ask you a question. Did you pray last night? Are you expecting a blessing from Zion today? If you are like me, can you join me right now as we make demand for our daily bread? Say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. And I receive today's benefits, all of it, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Woo, glory. I remember I was sharing something with you yesterday. So, I told you, the word of the Lord came to me. And I got healed, supernaturally, I got healed. I got up from that sick bed. And that was it. No, nobody prayed for me. No, I, ju I just got out from that sick bed. Whew, I was fine. It is good. All right. So now, years later, now this happened early this year. I was on my bed and sleeping, sleeping at night. And suddenly, I... I, I saw myself step out of my body. Mm. The speed of which I was rising is, can't describe. Sometimes it's difficult to describe these things. I knew I was going up, but there was nothing much I could do about it. Just being carried. I knew I was not with my physical body. I knew. But I knew I had my personality. It's just been taken up. And then, so fast, it just going through. Then suddenly we got into this realm. Now please listen to what I'm sharing with you. I'm not just telling you my experience. There's something the Lord wants me to share with you. That's why I'm sharing this with you. So, we got into this place where Rather, I got into this place where the speed became slow. So the journey became slow. I think the best way I can describe it is the, the pictures we have in our minds about uh, when people act in space. You know how you wear the space suit and you know how slow you are. Good. So it was like that, but, but I think faster than their own movement. But then I was still ascending, but slower now. And then in this state, I realized every one of my consciousness was at work. I, I, I know myself like, you know, but then I knew that there was a mark I could see, not a physical mark, but I could just see a realm of glory across a line. I could see it. And I know, the, 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 the anxiety that enveloped my heart is indescribable. What kind of anxiety? Eager to see where am I going to? Not, not, there was no fear in my heart. None. There was an excitement and anxiety. So much, you can't kasaya. Very difficult to explain. So as I was going, I, I saw that if you cross this mark, you're gone. And I tell you the truth, at that moment, see, listen, I love my family, I love my wife, but you know what? I didn't remember them. You know, it was later when I came back to myself that I, I began to think this. They're like, come, how come I didn't think of? anybody there was nothing to think about but 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 the the sight of where you're going to i'm telling you the truth. Now, i don't know if anyone have had this same experience now, i know people have talked about they went to you know where they call heaven and things they see now i was i'm just telling my experience and then suddenly looking at that i said to myself i said but this is not how you plan to go. 
I remember the story I told you that happened many years ago, almost 20 years ago. 1999, yeah. More than 20 years ago. Now, remember how my thinking was then. And then this one that happened now. I said, this is not how you plan to go. I said, no, no, this is not how I plan to go. And that's what I, I, I began to say that. I, I, I could say it. I said, no, this is not how I plan to go. And then immediately, like something shocked me out. I landed on the earth. I remember I didn't land in my house, I didn't land in my street. I landed somewhere, you know, I just, it was night. I landed on the street. And so as I turned to check where I was going, where I was, I opened my eyes on my bed. And you know how you wake up, I like, what just happened here? And so I began to meditate on this and, and I said, okay, what just happened here? And the Lord began to speak to me and teach me. He said, listen to me now. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. But what enables you to make that choice is the state or the information that you carry in your soul. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. But what will make you, help you make the right choice is the information in your soul. I had enough information. Now, you know, you know that thing, you know, remember I said the first experience when I was sick and I, and I told myself, you know, they like, they said, if you go there, you will not want to come back. I experienced that. The, the anxiety is indescribable. I don't know if that's the right word to call it, anxiety. Maybe not anxiety, maybe eagerness. You want to, wow. See, from where I was, I knew this is a beautiful place. I knew from where I was, I knew it was a glorious place. And I was about to enter in. But I said to myself, I said, no, uh-uh. I don't think the testimony is complete. That's what I began to say to myself. The testimony is not complete. This is not the testimony I want to carry. And then the Lord said to me, he said, they will teach my children this. And even when you step out of this world, hear me, this is the command of the Lord. You still have one decision to make. Oh, you have a decision to make now. You have to make it now. If you die tonight, it's all over. No, it's not all over. Even if you die right now, it's not all over. You still have one decision to make. Whether you go to heaven or whether you go to hell. I say, is somebody going to hell? Is sinner going to hell? You still will be giving. I think the process is the same. Because I've heard, you know, um, I've heard people share their experience about going to hell and coming back. And, and when I hear the description of the movement, I think it happened the same way going up. You, you are being sucked down without control, and then you as though before you enter the gate of hell, it becomes slow. And then you realize you could talk, you could pray, whatever you want to do. Now, I call me now. I, now, sinners, of course, out of fear, look at the gate of hell. You're being weird. You're being <laughs> carried inside there, you know. And all you can think, hey, had I known? Oh, had I known? Hey, this thing. Even at that moment, you can still. But you see, if you have not been taught to call on the name of the Lord. Now, there may be grace factor that, that is applicable at that point. You get what I'm saying? There might be, but I believe in my heart. You still have a role to play. 
But then what is the condition of your soul to make that kind of decision? It's not just a confession thing. That's why I brought out something that happened over nearly 30 years ago. See? And today, the condition of my mind was the same. Loaded with more information, but the resolve is the same. Not in a hurry to go out of this place. Not by debts. So debt is final. No, debt is not final. Your decision is final. Yes, your decision is final. I know this might be strange, but I'm telling you so that you can feed your mind with truth. That's what Jesus wants for us. Feed your mind with truth. Don't you know we have authority over debts? When are we going to use that authority? We, we speak these things, but when we face it, we, we act like we are helpless. Let me show you that scripture, John chapter 11. You need to see this. Thank you, Lord Jesus. John chapter 11. Jesus was the one speaking here. And verse 25, Jesus said unto her, I want you to pay close attention here. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. I want you to follow closely. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Then he asked her, he says, do you believe this? Now, how do you examine the scripture? How do you, what, what interpretation do you give to this? Now, I know many times we, we have interpreted things the way it was handed down over to us without critically looking at it. Because you see, as the days are going, we are growing in understanding. Now, you should learn to do these things. You know, that's why I always encourage, look, at certain points in your life, go through the Bible again. Go through the Bible again. Why? Because as your understanding and experience in life is increasing, so also your interpretation might change. See? Now, you just have to make sure that your interpretation is conforming with the teachings of the Holy Spirit. Now, that's why we were given the Holy Spirit. Now, you look at the scripture. What, what, what do you think? Okay, I'm the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me, if he dies, he will live. Now, what you think this scripture is saying, uh, even if he dies on the last day, I will raise him up. But do you know that's not what Jesus was talking about? No, read this in context. First of all, maybe we should look, maybe we should look at verse... Now, Mark will say, verse 22. You know the story? This was when Jesus went to Lazarus, as Lazarus had been dead for four days now, and Jesus got there. He was interacting with the sister. Now, he, he made a statement. So, follow this in context. Please follow me carefully because you may be hearing it maybe this way for the first time. Now, Jesus said to her, that's to matter, your brother shall rise again. Now, he was already dead. Lazarus was dead, four days buried. And Jesus said to her, your brother shall rise again. Now watch her response. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again at the resurrection at the last day. Now this is what we believe as Christians. Okay. Now understand something also. And this is, this is something that would, that would do something to your mind. Martha said this statement even without Lazarus being born again. She said, I know he will resurrect on the last day. Huh? Well, he wasn't saved. Now, I remember I've told you this on this broadcast before. I said, it's not everybody that is in, in, in hell that will be go, thrown into the lake of fire. Now, that's another day's teaching. But get what? Get what Martha. Martha was convinced that her brother will rise again on the last day. See? And he wasn't born again because Jesus hadn't died yet. Now, put that aside. But Jesus said, your brother will rise. He said, yes, I know he will rise on the last day. And Jesus, as though interrupting her, 
as though interrupting her thoughts or her words, he said, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. Okay. Why did he interrupt her to make this statement? Your brother will rise again. I know he will rise on the day of resurrection. That could have been fine. Yeah, you know, don't worry. It's okay. But Jesus said, no. No. I am. Now, when Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life, please understand what he's talking about. He's saying, you know, you believe that I'm the one that is going to raise him up on that last day, right? He said, now, this me that is going to raise him up on that last day. I am here now. I am the resurrection. When he says, I am the resurrection, I am the one you're looking forward to as the resurrection. Mm, are you getting this now? The one who's going to raise people at the last day, it's me. I am here now. And I'm telling you, your brother shall rise again. See? And, and at the end of the day, putting this in context, at the end of the day, Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus came out, being dead four days, came out of that grave alive. So in context, when Jesus said, anyone who believes in me, if he dies, he will rise again. He wasn't referring to rising on that last day. He, he was saying, if you die, one who has believed in Jesus, if you die, you have the opportunity to rise up again. Not the last day. Now, now. You, you die today, you rise the next moment. He didn't say when. And he said, I am the resurrection and the life. So we don't have to wait for the last day to rise from the dead. No, we don't. And look at what he now said the next. He said, anyone who believes in me and is alive will not die. So what does he mean by that? If he says, if he dies, he will rise, he will rise again. And if he's referring to the last day, then why would he then say, anyone who believes in me and is alive will not die? We misinterpret these things. And because we do, we don't release our faith for truth. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. We are approaching this season where only truth will prevail. You see, this truth has been hidden from the church. And so people die and we go, oh, he's gone to be with the Lord. He's gone to be with the Lord. Hmm. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Believe me when I say, that's why I told you all the stories I told you. You have a choice in the matter. Jesus said, this one thing I have received of my father, he gave me the power to lay down my life and he gave me the power to take it up again. If we believe that we are Christ and then we believe that all authority has been given to us, it means even this authority also. What authority? The power to lay down your life, the power to take it up again. If we believe it, then we should begin to look at this issue of death differently. And we know that every believer in Christ knows that God has given us authority over death. Paul declared in 1 Corinthians 15, he says, hey, in that, that we will get to that point. We say, oh, death, where is your sting? Where is your sting? Sting. Oh, grave, where is your victory? The grave of the victories that is swallowed you up. The grave of the brick, when they put you six feet down. You, and you know, if unconsciously, God's children keep declaring these things. Oh, at the end of the day, everybody will go six foot down. At the end, do you know where those words, those statements are coming from? They're not coming from the Lord. They're not coming from the word of God. They are coming from the devil. We confess it. After all, Death is inevitable. Who said so? I know this might be upsetting someone, but let me tell you the truth. You better be upset and find the truth than to continue pampering and then we keep going for generations without finding the knowledge of God's truth concerning this thing. Death is an enemy of God. It has never been a friend of God. It has never been a tool of God. Let me tell you the truth. Anybody who dies becomes subject to the spirit of death. That's how you die. You submitted yourself to the spirit of death by your words. Uh, so, so what do you mean? When we, when we finish our work, then what, what, what happens? Who even gave you the time to say that you have finished your work? 
oh because you think you're getting old you finish your work. what of the uh, 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 outward man is 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 you know paul says that do our outward man perish our inward man is renewed day by day and then also he said this this mortal body is quickened by the spirit of god listen to me brothers and sisters we must look at this thing critically you have a choice to make i'm telling you this so that you will let it sink in your mind on that day if death visits you you have a choice believe me you have a choice my time is up i pray god gives you understanding to these things in jesus name amen i'll see you tomorrow bye